defensive uh, backfield made a lot of plays, uh, especially Jane Davis and Daryl Porter seem to really stand out. Talk about that group. Uh, Davis, I mean, he was lights out. He played corner, played nickel, uh, played a lot of different spots, did a lot of different things. He blitzed a lot. I think he got a PBU. He got a tackle for a loss. He had a big cost fumble. Um, played with a lot of energy. He was physical. Uh, Porter held up, you know. Uh, I think he only gave up like one key pass. He kind of addressed the, the uh, safety a little bit on a corner route in the third down. But those guys held up. I was so proud of them because they, we played against some really good receivers, a really talented quarterback, which we pressured him a lot. But we had a hard time, you know, sacking him, you know, because he kept running away from us. But we felt like we eliminated some of the throws downfield by bringing pressure. So it allowed them. It was a bunch. I think they did us that out of uh, 50 drop back passes. It was something like 30 times. You know, we pressured him out of 30 something. We we actually made him hurry or pressure 28. You know, you know, so we were getting home. We were just doing things to try to steal the front, move the front, uh, try to mess up their blocking schemes by getting guys free. And we felt like we had to do that. And we had. Show me any of that, really anywhere I've been, other than on third down, I would do it some. But we did it probably 80% of the time. We still in the front and moved it before snap and then brought pressure after the snap, of course. So. The second half looked a little different than the first half. Did um, did Bobby do some things at halftime that made you have to adjust a little bit? Or um, they, they, they got a lot of yards in the second half. They did. Uh, I think he started tempoing us a little bit, started going to the formations and the boundary. He kind of changed some personnels up. He went from 11 to 12. He took some easy access throws. Um, they moved the ball, but we ended up stalling them out, which was good. In the first half, we had some bad field position, so uh, they got scores, but the yards didn't show up because they had short fields. So in the second half, they had more yards, but they stalled out. Thank yeah. God, you know, uh, the key, you know, key was we had a couple field goals, forcing the field goals, which was good. And, we had a two-point stop, which they snapped the ball on the ground. And, uh, you know, we didn't try to simulate the snap count. James was trying to get the corner's attention. He happened to clap a bunch of times, and <laughs> they snapped the ball. It's just a board football. I've been called for defensive uh, delayed game for that before with a kid not even trying to do it. But it is what it is. It's part of football, and we came out on the good end with that one. So you had to defend a lot during the course of the game. Um, did you walk out of the stadium feeling pretty good about the whole body of work? Ooh, I felt like I'd been in a war, man. You know, it was all the way to the end. I didn't really get to enjoy it. Uh, I like having the ball at the end of the game and taking a knee. Uh, I think if we make that stop, that Cam, you know, went down when that was a fourth down, and we get the ball, we run out the clock, and we take a knee, it would probably been a lot more enjoyable. We defended from the very first, you know, play to the very end. So it was a, it was a long game, and we had some great offensive minds over there. You know, uh, of course, Coach Petrino, Jimbo, and then they had uh, the guy who coached at Tennessee, Cheney, was an analyst over there. So they had three Power Five SEC offensive coordinators that we were going up against. Coach, it seems I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it seems like you can throw a lot of corner blitzes from Saturday. Got a couple of hits on with it. We batted the ball. We got some, got a couple of tackles behind line of scrimmage. We started getting into whenever the tight end was on the football. He wasn't off the football, flexed out. They were running the ball to the tight end side, especially when the quarterback was under a pistol. So we started blitzing from the tight end side and happened to be into the boundary. So we got a couple of hits on it. And, uh, it's just a part of some things that we do schematically. And uh, I thought the kids executed. We never planned for anything like that. Uh, thank God we had a, a plan that we were going to pressure and move the front and allow the guys that came in that were a little smaller and inexperienced to be able to get after it a little bit and play a little reckless and carefree. So uh, I thought Bain played really good. He got ill probably two, three times where he had got sacks that we didn't get a call. Um, There's some multiple guys, you know. Um, it's 
lot of guys ran through the football. We didn't grade out great up front. We had some MAs, but they played extremely hard, which was good. Your aggressive approach, is a benefit of that approach that eliminates some hesitancy and then maybe some overthinking uh, on the back end in particular? Um, you know, I think you need to pressure and do things to mix up, mix things up. If we were big up front and we were stout and they couldn't block us up front, I probably wouldn't pressure as much, you know. But when you're athletic and you're a little thin, then you have to do those things. And my probably my background, I've always been smaller than the opponents we play. You know, FCS days, we would play money games against South Florida and Nebraska. And we would always move the front and stem. We always played good against the run. And uh, my days at West Kentucky, Marshall, we've never been bigger than anything. Kind of just fits the type of kids we have here, and I think they enjoy it. They enjoy creating havoc and getting, you know, in the backfield. So, so it's like an engagement thing. You think like it just keeps them engaged. It does. It does. You know, each week they want to know what what we're going to do differently. You know, uh, especially early in the week when you show it to them, it kind of breaks the monotony of you know just going through a regular practice. It's like okay, what we got this week. You know, they kind of know certain calls. Each one of them have a chance to get a play. Coach, uh, so I'm assuming you're uh, with Cam likely out uh, for a little bit. Uh, how do you feel about the reserve safeties coming in for him? We'll mix it up. We'll have different guys playing the safety position right now. I can't say who's going to be the guy, but there'll be some corners that are rotating in at that safety as well. You know, a guy like Jaden Davis, he's playing any position. You just, just plug and play him. And TC's another guy like that too, Couch. Uh, of course, Harris is the natural backup that would be going in. But we got different guys that can go in and play. They know the defense well enough. They have enough experience to where they can move to other positions. Are any of those young guys that you've got starting to pop a little bit? You know, you playing a game like this, you really don't pop them in a the game. Right. You know, I mean, it's kind of tough. But I mean, in practice, so they starting to show. Or you things? just don't know. You know, you just you keep having them work against the good guys and on scout and one-on-ones and things are start to click. You'll start to see it. But uh, when you see it, you, usually when you start having injuries and guys have to be forced to play is when you really see it. It's just hard to take a starter out and put a guy in with no experience in the game. Sure. Like the other night, it's just you're going to go with the guys you, you feel good about, the guys that's been through some wars. So. Saturday night, James really talked about the impact of the Uh, you know, Cam and James, especially this last week, they practice the right way. Those guys make all the checks. Cam's always been an energy guy for us, the way he practices, uh, the effort he puts into it mentally and physically. But last week, something clicked with James. Uh, he practiced a lot better. He made a lot of plays at practice, and it came to fruition in the game. I mean, he looked like a five-star safety that I saw come out of high school. Uh, you saw him flash on plays. You saw him hit, and he just looked like what he was supposed to do, you know. So this week you'll have another good week, and it's it's all about confidence. And I really don't know what's happened here before, uh, so I can't speak on that. But I do know injuries play a part. And until you get healthy again, you, especially in defensive backs, wide receivers, when you're a skilled guy, you have to feel right. It's, you're like a track athlete. Nobody goes out there and runs fast that don't feel good. So these guys, they're skill guys, they have to feel good to play good. And I think James is finally feeling good like his old self and uh, had a hell of a game tonight. Coach, what has Jafari given you for two games, the ability to move him with just what he's given you so far? You know, he's uh, he's still battling a little bit, trying to get that strength in his shoulder. Um, each week it probably hurts a little different, but uh, he's, you know, one of the guys that can rush the passer. He, He's, that's probably more of his, you know, forte is is a speed type guy. But he's got a really good leadership and he practices well too. So uh, I think he'll have a big week this week. I think he'll uh, have a chance to get a couple sacks.